Jack Dorsey is out as the CEO of Twitter. He's also the CEO of Square, which was news to me. But we'll talk about both companies. We'll talk about the stock and give you an update on where we think these stocks are headed. We'll use our software and the Stock Analyzer tool to help you predict what you should be paying for these companies moving forward. And if you want to trade Twitter and that craziness or Square, Mo will show us the charts and the trends for all the trading. But first, why should you watch this video? I bring your questions about Jack Dorsey, these companies, and where they're headed to a couple guys who own and operate over $100 million in real estate, multiple businesses, in stocks and they will give us a mindset and guide us through the process of maybe buying or avoiding a couple companies like Twitter and Square. I give you Paul Gabriel and all of his hands in this. Hello, Paul. Awesome. So first off, follow us on Instagram, Everything Money Investing, our new account, and then follow our personal accounts for whatever reason, insert sarcastic comment here. So yesterday it was announced that the Super weird guy. I mean, does anybody not think he's so really weird? weird? He's so weird. He's a strange cat. I have a picture of him. He's just incredible. Like, he looks like he'd be libertarian, but he's not, right? I mean, he looks like a kind of guy who's like a libertarian. He like, looks like he looks like he's you know, like, a, like a vag government vagabond kind of, from an this. island. Like a he's desert, been Laden. Deserted island. He does. He looks like he's an ISIS. <laughs> Mo, that's, Mo that, that, looks like that. A be- that looks like a bearded you. I can say that, right? That looks like a bearded you. You can't, you can't get canceled for complaining <laughs> about your own people. Right next <laughs> Seth, let me borrow your beard. The hair is the same, Mo. I can't <laughs> believe you're saying this. Paul, what do you think? So, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if I'm... I don't know if I'm going to have a comment on him being... I, to me, it doesn't bother me that people step down and see... Yes, it's, you know, if somebody... If a company has a bad CEO, them stepping down can make the company... Can make the stock pop. That's just all, mm-hmm. that's all glitter around here. That's all distractions. Okay, great. At the end of the day, what matters is, are you going to put a new CEO in here who's going to understand this? And this new guy is this former chief technology officer who's, who's young. He's like, my, he's like he's, younger than me. He's going to be the youngest CEO in the, fortune, in, the, in the S&P 500. Yeah, even younger than Zuckerberg. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I thought Zuckerberg was like 33. He's been with the company for a long time. Yeah, since like 2000, whatever. Anyways, but here are some of the things I want to focus on with Twitter first. Go ahead, Twitter, Paul. their IPO had a 73% increase in day one. Okay. Mm-hmm. So back then, I remember having a discussion with one of the biggest idiots I've ever known in my life. Uh-oh. And he was telling me how I didn't understand. I did not understand tech. Another different, another guy didn't understand tech. And he said, Twitter is a buy all day in the fifties. Okay. Mm-hmm. All day in the fifties. What's the current price? 45, 40. Okay, so forty-five dollars. What was the ter- what was the price on December twenty-six, two thousand thirteen? Seventy-three thirty-one. Correct. How'd you know that? I'm looking at it. Oh, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> that was its all-time high. <laughs> did I just take your thunder? Yeah, you did. I'm, I'm like, sorry, Damn. Paul. You're all you had the research and you're all ready. To go. <laughs> I just seventy-three thirty-one. How many act? Okay, if you know this one, I'm gonna I'm just gonna walk off the set. No, here. I have no clue. Okay, how many active users do they have in at that time uh, period? Uh, when uh, back then? Yeah, Q4 2013. Um, uh, thirty million. No, two hundred forty-one million. Okay, so now guys, all the way back then. Yeah, all the way oh, back then. Wow. Okay, yeah. sorry. How many active users they have right now? Monthly active users. 700 a million? No, 330 million. Oh, wow. So here's my point. Here's one point. Go on. If back then I'd said to you, in eight, oh, eight years from now, the user growth is only going to increase by 30%. What would you have said to me? 40%. What would you have said to me? Yeah, you're nuts. I mean, yeah, it's like, no come on, Paul. Twitter's the big. People go. I remember being told this is where people go for news, which is true. Like, news breaks on Twitter. Yes. I, I just saw today that Brian Kelly. The Notre Dame coach, yes. who's now becoming LSU coach. LSU hasn't announced it yet, and somebody posted that he's already changed his entire Twitter account oh for LSU, Go Tigers, the wow. whole thing. Wow. So he's already announced it. So they're basically like, what's the point of even mm-hmm. announcing it? So, anyways, how many shares outstanding do they have on December 26, 2013, roughly? Oh, God. Um, uh, well, I should say, at the beginning of 2013, they had 471 million shares outstanding. Today, 800 million. Double. Over almost double. Almost double. So guys, the stock has fallen in half. Oh, Oh. here's a better one. How much revenue do they have in 2013? Well, not as much as today, I would assume, right? I mean, far far less. Yeah. I actually don't know. It's it's right here. Oh, 534 million in revenue. Yep. And today, 4.8 billion. Yep. So if I'd also told you in 2013, by the way, the revenue is gonna be 10 times higher in eight years and the stock's gonna be lower. What would you say to me? Paul, you're crazy. This is what you don't get. You're so stupid. Guys, 
We're in this huge bull market, and I'm already finding examples of stocks over the last eight or nine years that have sucked, even though their businesses' fundamentals have gotten better. This is just showing that overvaluation does not work in the long run. It just does not work. This 10 times the revenue, almost 10 times the revenue, and the stock is down. I'm taking this in in lifetime, Paul, because... I keep thinking, God, if a great, great company like Twitter that had all the momentum, it was the best thing ever, Top, all the top stars, all the top networks, they all, it's just a general, you know, the tweet is a new word, and all of a sudden you're saying that the revenue is up 10x, the subscriber base is not up that much, subscriber base, the user base is not up, and the stock has halved, I just, I keep going back to a stock like Tesla, where everything's gonna happen over the next 10, 15 years, the robots and the everything, and uh, all of it, even if all of it does, the stock could be half of what it is today. I mean, look at is. Instagram. In 2013, they had 110 million annual users. That was half the size of uh, that was half the size of Twitter. Now, granted, they're different platforms, but they're still social media. But that's exactly the point we talk about here, Seth. We're sitting here saying, look what has to happen in the future. All these things have to happen, and valuations have to stay reasonable in order for you to do well. This is what everybody's forgetting. So. This is, is, I love these examples because we are in such a massively hyped bull market and I can still find examples today of companies that just have hit every, that, that uh, the metric, if I told you eight years ago, if I said to you, okay guys, Twitter is going to have 330 million active users in eight years. First of all, you said, I, Paul, you're stupid. You're wrong. It's going to have way more than that. It already has yeah. 240 million. Triple. But I said, hey, the revenue is going to be 10 times higher. You're going to be like, see, that's that 50, that's $70 stock. It's going to be 700 or a thousand. You're and right. it's at forty five dollars today. Mm, mm, mm. Again, I will bring this. I will bring this comment in, and it's going to offend some of you, and I'm okay with that. I don't mind being the trying to be the Howard Stern or the David Portnoy of the finance world. If you don't get this, I understand that. I'm not the channel for you. We are not the channel for you. Just unsubscribe. Just hit the dislike button. I don't care. You're just not going to get it. Because to me, this makes absolutely the best sense in the world. And to somebody out there who's probably like, damn, you're right, Paul. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? And guess what? I'm wrong a lot, but my errors are usually of omission, right? Okay, I was wrong on, I was wrong on Tesla. I still think Tesla's going to sell for a lot. I was definitely wrong on Amazon. One million percent wrong on Amazon. I did not think they were going to have the growth they had. I did not think that at all. But this is what I'm talking about. In the long run, valuation matters. What's behind the company matters. But guess what? This company had 10x growth in its revenue, 10x growth in its revenue, and it still can't, couldn't make it. Then you look at things like, I, I, so anyways, back to Jack Dorsey. He's a weirdo. Like, I can't even remember the last thing we talked about having to do with Jack Dorsey talking about Twitter or Square in the, in the sense of like, everything. every time I hear something about Jack Dorsey, it's some it's crazy controversy. Some crazy statement he's making or something. It's, it's fine. It's fine, but... I, I look at this as a positive thing for both these companies. Just get him out of the just get him out of the way. Just go focus on building the business. Me, I'm more bullish on the fundamentals of Square than the fundamentals of Twitter. I'm not saying buy Square, because at the end of the day, let's use our exclusive software to go look at these companies. Sure. So let's go to the eight pillars tools. Let's first look at Twitter. So guys, Twitter, right here. $36 billion company. 36 billion. Five year PE of 211. Guys, we want this under 22.5. It is 211. Little high. Little high. Okay. No dividend. Five year return on invested capital is our pillar number two. We want it greater than 9%. It's 4.6%. Mm -mm. So, guys, even this great company can't even invest its own capital and get a decent return on it. Its five year average free cash flow is 570, and last year's free cash flow is 324. So it's actually decreasing. It's actually ca free cash from last year is down compared to the last five year average. Where's the positive here? There's positives. It's trendy. There's positives. Look at the revenue growth. It's crazy. 82 million, 534, all the way up to 4.8 billion. FYI, we did, we have a startup called Dynasty Owner. Go to dynastyowner.com if you love fantasy football. We use Twitter for, for ads. For, hey, Tim, how bad was it? It was awful. It was awful. It was, did not go well at all. Our Facebook ads go great. Twitter, awful. Mm -hmm. So, profit. Let's look at the profit. Net income, pillar number four. 
They lost 316 million. They lost 180 million. Guys, look at this. In the last 10 years, they've only made money in two years. In the last 10 years, they've only made money in two years. How long can they keep not making money? You tell me. They're issuing shares like crazy. Look at this. 471 to 797. Every year they just issue shares. Hey, what do I say about it? You're the crack dealer in the street. Everybody's going to keep coming to your, uh, to your car to buy crack. Just give them what they want. Just give them the crack. Fund all your losses. Who cares? Mm. Just keep doing it. Eventually, I mean, it's just, it's just crazy to me. I look at this and I think to myself, how are we, underst- how are we not understanding? This is why we, let's just skip to the eight pillars tab. So guys, for those of you who are new, we use our eight pillars as a way of getting a story for these companies. It's to say, hey, we've had eight check marks and we haven't bought them. We've had eight X's and we bought those companies. The point of the eight pillars, though, it tells us a story about where is the company going. Twitter has been around, has enough track record. This just overall, our valuation metrics are the first one and the last one. The price of free cash flow is 64. We want it under 20. The PE is 211. We want it under 22.5, the five-year PE. They can't make money on their invested capital. Their cash flow growth is negative. They have tons of debt. (laughs) 9.3 times their five-year average free cash flow is their debt levels. They're issuing shares like crazy. I, I don't know. Yeah, their revenue growth, their income growth is up. By the way, how is their net income growth only up 185 million on 2.37 billion in revenue growth? <sighs> Guys, these are the things I talk about. I talk about these pillars as a way of looking at companies saying, I mean, if, if it wasn't for us making a video, I wouldn't have gotten past yeah. pillar number four on this. Just saying, okay, this is just looking stupid. I don't even get this. I want to know how in 2020, when everyone was sitting at home, they lost $1.24 billion. Hmm. Wouldn't you think that Twitter would floss in that time frame? Well, let's go look at Facebook. So let's go pull up Facebook and look at Facebook's revenue in 2020. Oh, it was only up 20%. Oh, that's it. And their profit was only up 40%. Oh, sad. Mm. (laughs) So I look at this saying, guys, it's not even a good, relative to other social media platforms, it's not even like, could they end up turning things around and be amazing? Guys, remember, Apple was on the brink of bankruptcy like 18 times, and they turn around and become the biggest company in the world. Microsoft was considered dead 10 years ago. It's the biggest company at margin market cap in the world. These things can be turned around, but my comment is, let them turn around. Let them start that process. This is looking ugly. They're issuing shares like crazy. They're losing money in eight of the last 10 years. They're losing money even though their revenue is up 10 times. To me, I look at it going, so their, their, their average monthly user... Um, growth is up three or four percent a year. Their pr- their revenue is up ten x in the last ten years, and they still can't make money. Mm. What are we waiting for here? I don't know. Maybe there is something to the story. Yeah. What else can happen before they start making tons of money? It could happen. It mm. could happen. They could all of a sudden start making a billion dollars a year. But even at a billion dollars a year in profit, what would you pay for that? Would you like to show us in the stock analyzer? No. Yeah, let's look at the stock analyzer tool. Let's do. Yeah, you're on. You're so, guys, on, stock you're, analyzer tool is probably the most popular thing we have. Oh, I'm on Facebook, aren't I? Yeah, but go ahead. You were gonna you were gonna tell them about. Well, stock, stock analyzer. analyzer tool is probably our most popular um, portion of our website, and the reason being is it allows people. Every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. Okay, so what's that future cash flow? We don't know. The future is unknown. We don't know what's going to happen in the future, but we can make assumptions. And those assumptions should be based on past experiences of the company as well as projections. So what we did was we created the stock analyzer tool that allows everybody who subscribes to our software in our exclusive software to be able to put their assumptions in and it'll tell you, here's what you need to pay for the stock in the future. It's very simple. It's a very basic, but I like to keep things as simple as possible. I don't believe in Excel sheets of models and models and models. And the reason being is most people who do that are trying to show, trying to overdo their work. So when it doesn't work out, they can go, hey, look, I did, look at all these monster Excel sheets I made and it didn't work. To me, it's still cash in, cash out. Present value of all future cash flows. So first thing we do, we pull up Twitter, number of years of analysis. Let's assume they're going to be around for 10 years. We're going to do a low, middle, and high assumption. Now, guys, here's their revenue growth over the last one, five, and 10 years. They don't have 10 years of data, so it's not in here. But look at this. This is incredible. A lot of revenue growth. So let's say they do 10, 15, and 20% revenue growth. 20% revenue growth for the next 10 years is a lot of revenue growth. Just to let you know how much that is, yeah, this is high for you, I think, Paul. 1.2 to the 10th power, and they did 4.5 billion. That would take them $28 billion in revenue in the next 10 years. Is that possible? Absolutely. Is it probable? I don't know. Mm-hmm. 
So profit margin. Now here's the problem. There's not much in terms of profit margin mm. for this company. Mo's smiling over there. Why are you smiling, Mo? Because how are you supposed to put a profit margin on something that barely makes profit? Yeah. What I, I just don't. Mine. I would never do a stock an analyzer for a company like this. Correct. So but that's the hard part for me. Correct. It's it, but it's a good exercise. Yeah. Because sure. I'm going to go crazy on the high side. Let's do eight, twelve, and sixteen percent profit margin. Keep in mind, guys, they've never done that here. They've done that in one-off years. Last year and the year, two years ago and the year before that, they did about 20%, 25%. So they did well. But let's assume over a long period of time. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to go 10, 15, and 20%. Free cash flow margin. I'm going to do the exact same so basically thing. Basically, this company's going to reinvent themselves. Let's do PE of 20, 22, and 24. Price of free cash flow, the same thing. And guys, I always want a 12.5% return. The reason being is I want that margin of safety. Right? Now... I actually think the stock is going to come out at selling for a reasonable price. I think it's going to, but it's going to take these massive assumptions to happen. Analyze. Oh, actually it doesn't. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. The cackle that is Paul. Oh my God. <laughs> so guys, my cackle. So guys. 20% profit margin. So for 12.5% return, you need to pay a low of 15 and a high of 72. Now these highs and a middle is 35 these highs had to look at these high assumptions. So in order for the stock to be a buy today, you need between 15 and 20% revenue growth. You need 15 to 20% profit margin. You need 15 to 20% cash flow margin. You need a PE of 22 to 24 and a price to free cash flow of 22 to 24. So what this means guys is the company needs to do something it has never, ever done and for it, the next 10 years. And it needs to be pretty consistent about it, which it's, it's also never done. Yes. Mm -mm -mm. So does anybody understand how this is confusing to me? If you want to buy into this, by all means, guys, buy into it. But this is what we're trying to teach on this channel. We created the software because our users kept requesting, how do we do our own research without waiting for you to make your own videos? So we spent lots of money, created the software. You get everything you already saw in the video. You get all of this content right here, which includes 30 years of financial data, access to Seth Mo and I. You get it all on your mobile phone. This entire website, everything you've seen on your mobile phone, you get the stock analyzer tool. You get real estate calculator, retirement calculator, all the extra additions. You get our eight pillar portfolio, exclusive daily content, two or three videos a day from Seth Mo and I on separate topics. But most importantly, guys, you get access to six, over 6,000 people, our current active users of our software. They're in a chat that's very organized with multiple rooms about different topics. You can talk to them about all your investment ideas, tell them your ideas. They give you feedback. You have actual discussions because... Most of the people are like you out there who didn't have others to talk to about investing. Now you do. This is wonderful. It's only 90 cents per day. Less than a cup of coffee, guys. 90 cents a day. If you can increase your returns by 1% or 2% a year or decrease your losses by 1% or 2% a year, this will lead to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in extra wealth when you retire. 90 cents a day, guys. Two ways to sign up. Everythingmoney.com or Patreon. The benefit of everythingmoney.com is... You get no sales tax charged to you yet because we're not big enough. So sign up. You get access within minutes, 90 cents per day. Mo, show us the, the, the chart for Twitter and what happened yesterday with some craziness before we get into Square. So let's, let's move. I'm just going to zoom into yesterday. So this was yesterday. This big red candle was yesterday. This happened, and it was supposed to be Jack Dorsey's leaving, and it's, it, stock goes up 10%, and then today we open the day down here. So this just shows you how this kind of news this is when I say you get these flagpole patterns that pull back and whatnot. So this is a great stock to day trade um, just because it does have that volume on it. It has that, that consistency of big swing days. But for I'm noticing this from a longer-term perspective right now. You are holding a very nice support level right here, and it has hit that support level today. What I would do is buy a tracker share, spend $45, add a tracker share to it, and just wait for this red line to get into the sweet spot. I do think that from a trading perspective in the near term, this can probably get up to the – $60 range somewhere in there. I don't know if it's going to hold, but the good news is it doesn't matter for you. You can run that up a little bit over a couple of week period as soon as it gets in the sweet spot and make some money on it. That's the way to trade these crazy stocks. Paul, let's get into Square real quick before we, we get after All right, so back to the eight pillar um, tool. We're going to go to Square. And so uh, Uncle Seth, just to do a quick recap of Square, uh, Twitter had a 211 times P on PE, five-year PE. Yeah. Look at Squares. How bad is it? 696. Ooh. Last year's PE was 185. You've got a five-year return on invested capital for maybe maybe Jack Dorsey's just maybe he's the reason for all this. I'm yeah, just kidding. Maybe. Guys, 
at least with Square, their five-year average free cash flow is 310. Their, free, their last year's free cash flow is 643. So they have increasing free cash flow. So to go to our eight pillar tab, it gives you all the information without having to do all the math. Okay, this one, you, obviously the, the valuations are terrible. The shares outstanding are terrible. The debt's terrible. Um, it sounds very familiar, doesn't it? You know, if you're at home, if you're watching some of the comments below, they'll say, I knew before even watching this video, your thoughts on these. And I guess I, I marvel in those comments because it means that you're getting it, folks. I mean, if, if you look at a, if you look at the eight pillars that quickly, you might not need to look at a company much more, Paul. I mean, like Square is overvalued. They're issuing more shares. Their debt's terrible. Not much more to the story that a value, yeah. a value investor needs to know, right? I mean, right. And by the way, there's one thing. Of the, so our goal is to have a five-year PE under 22.5. If it was 23.5, it's still going to be an X. Okay, I can deal with that. Because remember, a company that's growing faster, you should pay more for. So I can get behind that. But 700 times a five-year of earnings. So I sit there and go, okay, maybe they just had a bad last five years. So look at their revenue growth of the last five years. 230, the last 10 years, 230 million to 16.7 billion. But let's look at it this way. We have some data from PayPal versus Square. So this is a big thing for me, Seth. Yeah. So PayPal. So Square did revenue of 16.7 billion with profit of 537 million last year. PayPal did 24 billion and profit of 5 billion. So 66% more revenue, but profit nine times higher. Wow, PayPal. But Square's market cap is 98 billion. PayPal's is 220. So PayPal is a little bit over double the value while making nine times more money. Hmm. Do you hear that? If I'm buying both companies, I'd obviously want pay PayPal at the moment. They're both overpriced, but the whole point is PayPal made nine times more money, but is only valued a little bit over double of Square. Why? Because Square is a sexy growth company right now. Look at this growth. By the way, PayPal is growing great too. But I look at these things, but here's the difference also. PayPal's gross margin and gross margin guys is for every extra dollar they sell. How much goes to the bottom line? PayPal's is 46%. That means for every dollar they make in extra revenue, 46 cents goes to the bottom line. Square's is only 24%. Yeah, 24, a third. Almost half. Oh, half? Yeah. What'd you say, a third? Yeah, I thought you said 60 something. But you said no, 50 something. 46 versus 24. Oh, oops, I, I switched my numbers. Yeah, you know, Paul, uh, Square, unlike PayPal, Square is like, becoming the industry standard for like small we love square we use square on everything me money. too yeah i mean it's like when i go into a shop i love that little kiosk they flip around and yeah so why can't paypal develop it? is it a hardware thing I, I really acting stupid at the moment like why can't paypal get into something like that I'm sure they are i, I have no idea i thought right. they i thought i heard that they are but it's hard for them to break into a market that's or maybe so i'm nuts by... you know this tap pay stuff paul uh, i mean I, I love it maybe that whole kiosk just goes away in the next couple of years and paypal gets a tap pay or something i want the so chip easy. yeah so one thing that could happen is if a market corrects quite a bit, what if PayPal just bought Square? I see. What if the market corrects and this company becomes a $20 billion company versus a $100 billion company and PayPal just goes, yeah, we're just going to buy you. Hmm. All more, right. more people trading Square over there? Let's see. So Square is, I'm going to pull it up on a day trading chart because Square is one of my favorite stocks to day trade. And it's because you every single day, you get some kind of opportunity to trade it. Let's see if we can zoom out a little bit. So this is, I'm just showing you trends right now. So you don't really need to see everything, but we notice here when we're below 20%, we have these great engulfing candlesticks down. The next day, where can we find something? In the afternoon, above 80%, great engulfing candlesticks up. In the morning, ev so every single day, you get some kind of trend where you can go and trade square long-term. That's why I love this so much because it is a volatile stock. It has a, it has a high beta, which determines volatility of a stock. So when you're looking for stocks to day trade, go and find stocks with higher betas that you can day trade on a daily basis. And this is where you go and make money on these things. You, I wouldn't be in them long term from like a value perspective, but there is opportunities to make money on these types of stocks. Day trading is a way to do it. So if you want to, if you want to learn to day trade with me, come and join me in the Bid and Ask Nation. The Trading 101 series gives you all of the rules to learn how to do this and the long-term rules, like how you would make the Twitter, the Twitter trade. The Employed Trader series, it's a series of six stocks that you can come and trade with me and I teach you about every single day. Exclusive monthly seminars that I do every month and one is going to be coming this coming Saturday. And then the Bid and Ask Nation community on the Discord of over 900 people that all want to do the same thing as you. That is our take on Twitter and Square and Jack Dorsey. We'll keep you updated as these 
companies progress and as the years progress uh, it's an avoid for us which is a lot of these videos but we want we want few bets we want great bets when we buy our stocks so that's our take final thumbs up join the community and thanks for watching